What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Colin Ray, who had six Ks and five and two-thirds innings, giving up only one run on two hits. It is cutter, breaking ball, and sinker, and looked really sharp. Nick Martinez had this dirty changeup. Dirty Martinez? Martini? Meh. But to be honest, I kind of got distracted during this changeup because I actually found Waldo. Joe Ryan broke out his new split change and had these fastballs. He learned that split change in spring training, and it looks like it's paying dividends. He had 10 Ks and 7 innings, giving up only one run on three hits. He faced off against Johnny Brito, who had Bugs Bunny stuff, but not in a good way. He gave up seven runs in only two-thirds of an inning. Jeffrey Springs was brilliant again for the Rays. He had five Ks in three innings, thanks mostly to his fastball and changeup combination. And his changeup is so, so good. Here's an overlay of his fastball and changeup. You can see why that combination is deadly. And I also overlaid his changeup and his slider. And you can see why, even though he doesn't throw really hard, his sequencing and tunneling makes him really tough. Unfortunately, he got injured after 41 pitches. I have to say that doesn't look good, but Spring said he left as a precaution because he felt tingling in his hand. We should find out more today when they do some imaging. It really sucks because he's having such a great year. He's got a .56 ERA this year. What happened on the mound and what you felt? Um, the pitch prior kind of just felt a little bit of something in the you know the elbow forearm area. It's kind of it was kind of hard to pinpoint. Um, Obviously, they came out, you know, kind of trying to stretch it out just to see how it felt. And then when the warm-up, uh, just a little bit kind of, you know, like a zinger kind of in like the forearm a little bit. Uh, just thought it was best probably not to continue at that point until I can figure out, you know, what it is. But, uh, yeah, we'll see tomorrow. Hopefully, hopefully it's nothing more than just a nerve uh, kind of flared up. But, um, you know, everything else seemed to be okay with the testing and stuff. So we'll see. He faced off against Corey Kluber, who had these sick breaking balls, including this one that went back foot. And he also got a sword on a breaking ball. And got this routine ground bat on one, too. Kluber also had this nasty dead zone cutter. He had seven Ks in only four and two-thirds innings, but did give up four runs. Jordan Montgomery had these painted inside two-seamers, including this one that got a jump back. And I had a lot of people say, no, that's a ball that never got to the plate. If you see a solid dot on almost any broadcast, that means the pitch caught the robo zone. If you see an open circle, that means it's a ball. So both the human umpire and the robo umpire would have had this as a strike. Montgomery also had this Expelliarmus curveball. He had five Ks in six and a third innings, giving up only two runs. He was up against Vince Velasquez, who was brilliant with six strikeouts and six scoreless innings. He had filthy stuff, including this wicked changeup. Look at that movement. And he had this nasty slider. Spencer Turnbull had these sliders and curveballs on his way to six strikeouts at five innings, giving up only one run. He was up against Chris Bassett, who had outstanding stuff. Bassett had seven Ks in six innings and gave up only four hits. It's great to see him bounce back after a couple of bad outings. He had his elevated cutters, his gorgeous curveball, I mean, look how pretty that is. Here's an overlay of his cutter and curveball, and you'd see why those pitches in combination are really tough. As a hitter, they look the same, and that curveball drops out of the swing path. He also had these sick front door two-seamers. Nearly perfect. And check out this wicked sweeper and two-seamer. The sweeper broke 19 inches, and that two-seamer, 18 inches. One of the things with Bassett is he throws with different arm angles. To get his breaking ball to sweep, he sometimes drops his arm angle. Here's an overlay that shows those different arm slots. And I asked Bassett about this, about how he stops hitters from picking this up. So do you intentionally change your arm slots? Like, is your slider and curveball kind of the same pitch other than changing your arm slot? Or? Yeah, so my, 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 my true 12-6 curveball, my arm slot's high um, for that. So I try to four or five times a game throw a fastball higher arm slot. And then my slider, that's the, long, the, the bigger one, um, my arm slot's definitely lower, so I try to throw five or six four seams from low slot just so they 
basically can't see an arm slot and say this is the pitch that's coming. Bailey Falter had these fastballs in sword and an elevated slider. He had four Ks in four and two thirds innings, but he did give up five runs. And he faced off my filthiest starter of the day yesterday. It was Nick Lodolo. Lodolo had six Ks in five innings, giving up two runs, but that didn't tell the story. He had his fastball that gets on you really quick. But again, the story of Nick Lodolo is his ridiculous breaking balls. Yet again, he got hitters to swing at breaking balls that ended up behind them. Look at this. And here's a home plate view that shows you why you might swing at a breaking ball that ends up behind you. His extreme arm angle, his position on the rubber, and the break of the pitch makes this impossible. Now onto my filthiest relievers. Adrian Martinez had five Ks in relief. Alex Young had these nasty change-ups. Braden Bristow had four Ks in relief for the Rays. I think the Rays are just making up pitchers at this point. Notably, also in the Rays game, Tristan Casas had this 14-pitch walk and let out a scream. 14. Some thought that would be a turning point in this game, but spoiler alert, it wasn't. The Rays won their 13th game in a row. Oh well, an A for effort. Alexis Diaz had this slider and got the sword. Devin Williams caved the side in his only inning of work, thanks to his fastballs and airbenders. And look how filthy those airbenders are. One of these ran 24 inches. IKF had this EFIS at 38 miles an hour, which according to Codify Baseball, is the slowest pitch any Yankees ever thrown in the pitch tracking era. And I overlaid it with his 65 mile an hour fastball, and you can see why this isn't really great tunneling, but it kind of looks cool. Felix Bautista had this disgusting stuff. I mean, splitters and sliders, I don't see how anybody hits him because he also throws 101. Alex Lang had this 89 mile an hour hammer. I know there are people wondering whether this was a swing or not, but on this side view, I'd say my official ruling is sword. What do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments. But my filthiest pitch from a reliever yesterday and the filthiest pitch of the day was this absolutely perfect sweeper from Kevin Kelly. I don't think you can throw a better sweeper. This thing broke 23 inches and was painted. It starts way in the opposite batter's box, comes in and just clips the zone exactly where he wanted it. And you can see as a hitter why you'd give up on it. Because you think there's no way this is going to come back and catch the zone. Reese McGuire lost his mind after this pitch, but he honestly just should have tipped his cap. And again, remember, solid dot means it caught the zone. I know some think that dot is where the catcher catches it, but you can see that ball was caught well on the plate. This will undoubtedly be one of the best pitches of the year. And it's thrown by Kevin Kelly, who is newly minted in the Rays pitching lab. Amazing stuff. In Japanese baseball, there was a huge matchup this morning between Roki Sasaki and Yoshinobu Yamamoto, two of the best pitchers in the world. Yamamoto had this beautiful curveball and finished with nine strikeouts in six innings, giving up only one run. And he was outdueled by Roki Sasaki, who was unbelievable. Sasaki had 11 Ks in seven innings, giving up only one hit. He had this fastball that touched 101, and these ridiculous splitters and sliders. He's without a doubt one of the best pitchers in the world. And he's only 21 years old. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. What could be more zen-like than Zach Greinke playing catch with his son on an off day? I also love that his son doesn't want to grow up to be a baseball player. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are three-leg parlay. I'm going to go with Nestor Cortez for 5Ks or more, take Drew Rasmussen for 5Ks or more, and top it off with Kodai Senga for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?